So we've barely had time to get a breath back then from the um, thrills and spills of Cheltenham last week and it's already time for the greatest steeplechase in the world, the Grand National from Aintree and Liverpool. 30 gruelling fences to be taken over the best part of four and a half miles and yesterday Doug and myself went through the card and uh, did a little bit of a pin stickers guide for you to each and every one of the runners so let's get straight on to that now. So just time for Doug and me to have a quick scoop down the card and um, let you know what we think, see how they're all going. So how you doing Doug? I'm good Martin, how are you? That's good, I'm good, looking forward to this race, it looks like it's going to be good, some good horses in it. Uh, big field, yep, maximum, forward, maximum yeah, number of runners. Yeah, looking forward to it all season. It's going to be good. So we'll take a yep. little look at them all then shall we? So we'll look at the top weight first, top one. No worries, and Cappuccino is right up the top and uh, it's going to be carrying the top weight. So that's going to be a big handicap to start with, and especially in a grade three. And just looking through the form, it's um, it's got some good form there. It's had a win over 36 furlong, and a second over 35, and a third over 32. But it's also been pulled up, and it has fallen, and uh, and unseated the rider. So uh, you probably like to think. Uh, look, I think it's, it's going to go real close because I I know um, Paul Rhodes is stable a little bit from the last couple of seasons, and his coffee themed horses are he's just great and national runners but I think this one will go close but won't win because of the weight yeah I think I'm, um, I tend to agree with most of that I, um, I've got to say I don't fancy it at all I think the um I don't think if it was anything other than a Paul Rhodes horse, nobody would be giving it a chance, to be honest. I, don't, I just can't really see why it's got top weight. It won that more million a uh, couple of weeks ago, well enough, mm. over, the, over the distance. But it's fell. It's unseated its rider. Yep. It's pulled up. It's got a lot of weight. I can't see it finishing in the top dozen. Oh, which is probably cool. the first controversial statement yep. of the day. And we're only on the yep. old sport mod. But I can't have a piece of it. I wouldn't touch it. Well, it's good. You've, you've walked out the bat. You've taken centre. And you've just swung up the first one and cracked. I have. I know. So, That's the way I'm rolling these days <laughs> <laughs> beautiful so okay well uh, from, says, your, from uh, I'm still gonna I'm gonna say Cappuccino top five, but you're going not in the top I'm going 10 no, or I'm going nowhere. Or I'm going nowhere at all. I hope for yep, Paul no Rhodes' sake I'm wrong, but I just can't see it. Yep. So the second one on the card no then, uh, it's got a pound less, hasn't it? Joe, that's uh, Peter Kale. Is that one? Peter Kale. To me, that one looks like it's got better form. To me, it's uh, it's won over 34 furlongs. It's been third over 35 and 36. It doesn't appear to have fallen, and it'll it'll get around. No, it does. It'll get around. The weight will stop it. But it'll it'll get round, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see it with a single digit finish. After we've been through the rest of it, I might even put it in put it in for a place or but I think it'll it'll go close, and I think it'll beat Cappuccino. No worries. No, Joe does look good. It's the first time I've looked at his form. Run third to uh, Paul Rhodes uh, Chino, but then again, it was on a heavy track, and that may not have suited it. But it still ran third. No, it's a good goal. I, I think it's going to be right up there, and the chances up in the top five. And once again, the only worry for this horse is the weight. Right, we'll move on to the next one and that's Last House John Morgan runner and it's only had the three starts it's first started unseated the rider over 35 furlong then up one over 35 just a handicap chase then it was fifth over handicap chase again another Moore's Millions it's good to soft again it's going to be in the top 10 it's, it's just yeah, it's almost as good as present Abbey so and no excuses if it doesn't yeah. win but um, the form yeah. doesn't look he's not a trainer you want to bet against is he because he's, uh, that's right. he's got a magic touch but I I, I don't know. I can't. I can't see this one winning. I don't like it's got the form to me. It's not only not, not had enough runs, and it's unseated its rider. And I, I don't like. Don't like anything in this race that's got a habit of chucking the jockey off, even though the fences are only little tiddly things compared to what they used to be. Yeah. It's um, yeah. it's, you still got to jump it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that'll get a place either, to be honest. Um, that's fair call. Cool. And I think we missed one unless it's been declared a late night one on the case. There's number was the third one. That one's got a lot of form, and that one um, that one last time out as well in the Midlands Grand National, which it's is a, a little bit little bit shorter. Well, it's had two wins over the 33 furlong, mm. and it's had a Grade Three handicap win. Well, the biggest worry. From my point of view, it's got three Fs and three Fs. It stayed on its feet the last two starts. Just be thinking, uh, is this the start? It drops, drops the jockey or falls. It's um, yep, no. not for me that one. I'm afraid. Yep, no, I'm, I'm with you as well. We'll let that one. We'll let that one go. Okay, that takes us on to applaud then, doesn't it? The next one. What do you make of this one? Uh, let's just have a look. Applaud. Okay, so the trainer is Derek Hinton, Hollywood Hinton. Yep. He loves his uh, hunt horses. We just go through it. It's, um, it's had a Group Three. It won a Group Three, but only over. The 32 furlong. It's only fallen the one, so uh, unless Hollywood knows something we don't, I'm going to leave a plot alone. 
Well, I'll tell you exactly why I won't be going anywhere near it, and that's because it runs from the front. And you could argue that if you run from the front in this race, you keep out of trouble. That's true. But you could also argue that there's plenty of others that like to run from the front, and they'll they'll cut each other's throats. And this one, I mean, Claude is one that likes to uh, likes to go from the front. And when we get right down the bottom of the card, we're going to come to a, a horse called West Tip, and that one goes off like a rocket. I don't think a Claude will be able to keep up with it. And if he tries to keep up with it, it'll wear itself out, and it'll fade. Probably be out of it. I don't think a Claude's going to be winning. Be uh, came Bambo yep. and um, Smart and Cans horse, consistent trainers. This horse had a lot of starts too, hasn't it? It has. And um, it's actually quite consistent. It's run uh, four placings, uh, been pulled up twice. Uh, it's, well, it's had two seconds over 36 furlongs and it stayed on both those races. So I'm, I, I think we're looking at the first series uh, horse in this race, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think so as well. The, the, uh, one of those pulled ups yep. was over hurdle, so that you can you can probably forget about that because they probably went too quick for it. Possibly be slightly concerned that it's run every week of the season so far and you think could go well I don't see it winning but yep. I certainly see it I'm calling Kane Bambo top 5 yep I think it's got a good chance of running a place at the moment for me that one and uh, moving on to the next one uh, Ramsey's yep. next this is got a Kevin Minahan. yeah this has got a red hot chance it won really well last week at Cheltenham just got up on the line over yep. 32 furlong so the um, little bit of extra will help because it was just really just getting going at the end its second start was over 35 and it was restrained early midfield halfway stayed on well to run second but on a heavy track yeah this is another horse i know that in the trainer's note here kevin is uh concerned with the weight it's up 10 pound for the Cheltenham win thinks it looks harsh it was uh, still my best ever chance of winning the race so you've got to be a bit careful with these trainers haven't you because well they're, 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 all, they're all playing a game a lot of the time aren't they I mean, they're not they're not daft they're, they're they're clever people they know what they're doing he entered that horse last week at Cheltenham with the intention of winning you know you know fully well if you win a race at Cheltenham you're gonna go up six eight ten twelve pounds mm. before the run national so he knows that horse can take that otherwise he wouldn't have run it last week so this is another one of these Cole. famous trainer bluffs so I'm gonna say it's gone up too yep. far and I won't say it won't win there yep. don't take any yep. notice of that ten pounds ain't gonna stop that from the way it ran last week at the yep. moment that's just gone to my pecking order that's the one at the moment that yep. I'm putting top but we'll see where we end yep. up at the end uh, but well, I'm, I'm actually gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna say it'll finish five through to 10. I don't think it's a top five finisher. Two starts ago, it was 11 over a grade three handicap, and then four starts ago, it ran fifth over a grade three handicap. I just think winning last week, that was excellent for Kevin Manahan, but I think it was a curse for this horse. I don't think it'll handle the weight. So, so what's your call on <laughs> Ramsey's? My well, call, call on that is at the moment of the ones we've gone through, if I had to pick one of those to win it, that's the one I'd pick, but I'm not saying that's what I'm going to go okay. for at the end. Well, our next horse is Rumble Down Lad. It is for the Jim Murray stable, and Jim Murray class trainer and he's a bloke who's just behind the top flight um, but he's only just behind so this is a horse we've got to have a serious look at it has unseated the rider it has fallen besides that it's last three starts it stood up um, look I think the query we've got for this horse is the distance yeah definitely if you look at that it hasn't got it hasn't completed a single start further than 29 furlongs has it the one, the one time it, um, it attempted it it didn't get past the fourth fence so we, we don't know really we can't say it doesn't but we can't say it can or well, I can't say it does. So it's it's an unknown unknown thing, isn't it? If it stays, yep. it's got a favourites chance of winning. Oh, I'd say uh, Rumble Down Lad will finish outside the top ten. We we've got no we've got no proof that it doesn't stay. Yep. We haven't got any proof that it does either. But we go right back to week yep. two and he entered it in a race over this sort of trip and he entered it for a reason because he must have thought he could win it. So um, I'm not going to necessarily yep. rule it out. But I'm, I'm not I'm not putting it in the um, I'm not putting it in my top four because it's um, of the of the possibility that it won't. Um, yeah, uh, well, that's a fair call. That's a fair dealer. What do you think of this one? Well, the, well, what I think of this one is why is it so high in the handicap? It's never finished further, never finished closer than fourth. It's finished fourteenth oh, in fourteenth in a group one, fifteenth in a group three handicap, fourth in that cross country thing of yours last week. That Glen Farkless. We hmm. better not let you say that after hmm. you've had a load of gin. Leave me alone on that one. <laughs> I can't understand why it's that far up in the weights. Um, I think it's a great credit to the, uh, the trainer who just happens to be the. Uh, the, the trainer who won the, the, the gold cup last week that he hasn't moaned yep. about that he hasn't moaned about its weight because I've been moaning like nobody's business he had four races <laughs> fell twice and it's about a seventh in the handicap do you know what you and me have got more chance of winning this without a horse we, we run round and jump the fences yep. we beat that one that's got that's yep. got no chance <laughs> I, I think the only form line I'm 
I can take for this horse, Elip, is its first start, where it's run six in a, a maiden chase. And we know the maiden chases that are more like a grade one or a group one. And that's and that and it just says here behind halfway it ran on, but I still don't think that's enough else to fire, having being so far up in the weight. So I'm going to go look unless you know something about the horse. Um, I'm, I'm I'd say it's going to finish outside the top ten. Yeah, I can't, I can't see it getting any. I can't see it getting anywhere near. To be honest. Okay, our next horse is another Kevin Menahan horse. This is his uh, second entry, and that's uh, Rocky Creek. Rocky Creek. So that means he's, he's got two in there, hasn't he? That are pretty high up the, up the handicap. Yep. So he's um, in with a chance. But again, you look at the form, and it hasn't won a race yet. And it's pulled up behind it halfway. Behind it halfway. Last two starts pulled up. I can't, I can't see it. To be honest, I can't see how you could give this one a chance at all. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Rocky Creek will finish top ten, but it'll be. It won't be top five. I just got a feeling with this. I think. Uh, no, I think it's a. It's a. It's a banker not to finish. To be honest, I think it's, if you're having a bet on uh, yep. horses whether they're going to finish or not, this is one of the ones that I'd be saying won't, yep. won't get round. It'll. It'll be out in the back and pulled up. Oh, we differ on opinion again. <laughs> we do. I've been a bit sort of. Uh, I've been a bit harsh today. I think I just sort of like got a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I don't wish to good. upset anybody, but I'm just sometimes just got to say it like kill on you really, and uh, <laughs> you can't you can't sort of wax lyrical about everything. And as as yeah. usual, this race, 50 60 percent of the field ain't got a cat in hell's chance of winning. So uh, we might as well say so, aren't we? Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're ruling it out, and I'm I'm giving it some chance. Okay, mysticism next. Before I sort yeah, of well, upset Leon everybody, but, uh, Leon's not over overtly confident of the horse. He thinks his other stable run is the better horse it has performed okay has been pulled up twice now I'm ruling it, it it's the last start was a group one so you've got to take that into account it's round six I'm going to say it won't make it I'll say outside the top ten yeah well, that's on no that's got no no chance at all on I think um, uh, next one down is for Stu Gray and that's Librano it's another one of them isn't it really it, it fell last time didn't it in that in that race at, at, at Cheltenham last week so yep. that's, that's got to put you off a little it, bit but, in a grade one but it, it drops down here doesn't it so it does but you, you know the fences are still the same size whether you've been running in grade ones or whether yep. you've been running yep. in egg and spoon races yep. and if you can't mm. jump mm. you can't jump I'm not saying this one can't jump because it's got round on it all it's all, all it's other yep. all it's other races but I don't know. It's one of these. It's one of these things with me. I mean, I've been watching the Grand National since about 1862 or whenever it was. <laughs> I started watching it, and <laughs> the, the fences are nowhere near as big as they used to be. But you still got to jump them. And my first yep. sort of like rule is anything that falls or unseats its rider on a on a regular basis, or without there being some sort of explanation that is not the horse's fault. You've got to rule it out because it's it's, it's, an, it's another one for me that ain't gonna win. It appears to me. Well, this is a horse he's entered um, during the transfer win. Look, I'm not going to rule this horse out. I'll, I'll always overlook my mistake. And um, uh, look, I think it's probably top 10. Probably going to end up about 15 horses to the top 10. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Stu Gray's doing all right. So I reckon, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it can finish up in the top five. But I think it's if it stays on its feet, it's going to be, you know, around the mark. Mm. But I'm not going to say. Right, national sensation. Next. That's Joshua Sutherland. Sutherland and Josh is the trainer on the up and takes his breeding very seriously and he's a hunt very seriously and well it's been starting over the long distances most times oh. it does stay on in a lot of races look this one's a hard one to call see I, th- I think he's had this one lined up for this race right from the start I'm pretty sure he sort of might have mentioned it as a potential Grand National right back in week one or two when we first started doing these and it's, but it's yeah. been really really high in the weight and it's coming down and down and down um, and it's which can co- only be in its five yeah and it's had a couple of races where it's, it's got close the, the worrying thing of course is the couple of unseated which means it obviously um, likes to wall up a fence and um, it jumps round it'll be it'll be in the van going over the last two fences if it's still on its feet by then it yep. probably won't win but yep. if it stands up it'll be one of the ones being called out going over the second last and yeah, that's the I'm, point I'm going to go another top 10 here um, I'll probably have a look what, see what his other horse is but just the fact he's not named a national sensation it's obviously done well in his trial and uh, it just may need that bit more distance and, uh, I'm, I'm not going to call it top five I'm going to go out I think this is his horse so City Press next then oh, yeah, City Press Paul Tweedle mm. uh, we've got the unknown trainer here yeah, now this could be one of those. Um, this could be one of those stories, couldn't it? Where you got the Grand National train by trainer that isn't necessarily mentioned every week. Mm. One, one of those maidens that you talk about at the first 
the first week, so it must be pretty and, good to win with and, them. And a maiden, either the maiden was not a very strong maiden, or or it was a good maiden where you've got to have a good horse to win. A second start, it went back. It went back in distance. Five furlong, uh, no, three furlong, sorry, 600 metres. And 13th, stayed on, it's not yep. been far too short. And he's gone to th- uh, 30 furlongs, stayed on. And I reckon this is a smoky. This, yeah, this, and then it hasn't run again. Now, how many times do we have to run to get in this? Does he, has he got to run three times? Yep. So this and, is obviously yeah, the plan. Well, co- this is um, the plan. I think somebody was in the forums yesterday. Was it um, was it Goat Zapper saying, now all the entries are in, who's got one that they've um, been, been keeping for this? And I reckon this could be one of the ones that's been stashed away. You can get the regulation three runs. You probably weren't very happy when it won the first week because <laughs> didn't want it to get, get too big a weight. And then it's gone, like you say, it's gone down in trip, but it hasn't fallen and it hasn't turned um, particularly badly. And now it's suddenly uh, appeared again. And I'll tell you the other thing too I've, I've noticed. This horse was entered in his stable right from the start of the season. Had its first race in the first week, the third week, and then the sixth. And it hasn't been cited. The uh, one I'd negative, say, there's one negative it's got about it, and that is that it's, 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 it's older than me. It's, it's, a, it's pretty old. Now, whether that'll make any difference or not, I don't know. It's 11, which makes it the oldest horse in the race. Yeah, fair call. Cool. Um, uh, I'm going I'm to overlook the 11, and um, I'm saying... I'm going top five here. It's gone in well with the weights, and it looks like the distance won't uh, be a problem. And um, Paul Tweedle, well, we'll put it this way: if it runs in the top three, you, you're on this test this horse for the next two years. Because <laughs> sooner or later, it's gonna it's gonna show a positive to someone. It's um, it's certainly <laughs> the most interesting one we've come to so far, isn't it? Because we know very little about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know how many horses. Paul Tweddle's got. He might. He might be the only one he's got. Could yeah. be. A, it could be a, a major coup. This we'll have to. We'll have to see. Uh, and, and, and the other thing with the national, and you you would have seen a few trainers over the past X amount of months just occasionally say it's hard to breed horses that can run the national distance. And you've got to be someone like the professor who's just mixing the potions day and night, bloodlines to get something to run it. But if you've got a game bred horse, that's that can be the big difference. So and the thing. Is we don't know which horses are game bred or home bred. That's true. So, and if City Press is a game bred, well, then this thing's right up to, it, to its eyeballs. Mm, certainly, um, oh. it's certainly an interesting one. I think um, probably going to fall at the first fence now. We don't know. We probably just put the kiss of death on it by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> if Paul Tweddle watches the live stream he'll be going oh no them pair of Muppets are talking about my horse why don't they just shut up and go away <laughs> well we better move on to the, the next one that's Grey Clutterbuck's Field of Dream I don't know if it's supposed to be Dreams or just Dream anyway it doesn't it's matter. probably some obscure B-side uh, from some weird weird 1980s pop song or something that nobody else has ever heard of Field of Dream I don't know yeah yeah he says it's his grand national hope he said he's not risking his mark running in the Paul Wars um, so he's just had this horse set for the, for the national all, all along um, Sunseated the rider the last two starts I know that'd be more I'd be more concerned about that than the handicap mark if I was if I was grey I'd be sort of thinking well the last few weeks well I ain't been running it let's send it for a bit of jumping practice instead mm. because and when you look at that and you look at the form it's unseated the last two times one before that stayed on well but before that no extra behind it halfway stayed on well stayed it's, on yeah it's a hard one to call like, I think I think you're thinking the same way as me that the last two starts are uh, Black Cross beside his name. And yeah, and he's not having a lot of yeah, luck with his chases, is he, at the moment? Miss Beat and Aqua yeah. Blue, they keep falling over, and then that, that, that one as well. It's, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I it'll, can't see it, to be honest. I, I'm with you on this one. I think if it stays on its feet, it'll be in the top ten at the finish, but not sure it's going to stay on its feet or we'll have the jockey at the finish. No, I think we'll probably agree with that. Second, Paul Rhodes next. Professor Horse. Lagos Coffee. Lagos Coffee, and uh, look, I think this one's top three. I'm just <laughs> I know it's fallen, fallen a couple of times, but uh, I just I know what this horse is all about. In the last uh, 12 plus months, I've been uh, calling the races, and, um, and this is the third national I'll be involved with. The first one was an exhibition, the second one was the real, real deal, and now the third one is a real deal as well. And the coffee horses are strong horses, hard beat, and top three here, mm. regardless that it's had a fall, couple of falls. You see, I'll tell you what worries me. You look at that, well, you know I'm going to say the two Fs, but it's the, it's the, the first F is the real worry. Fell at the first. Fell at first. Now, you look at the start of the Grand National, they go too fast, they go bombing down towards that first fence like nobody's business. Yeah. And I can see this one falling at the first. I can really can. I can just see it going straight over the top. And... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> 
if this was trained by if this was trained by you or me, nobody would think he'd have a chance of winning. Because it's because it's it's the professors, it's him with a yeah. chance. It's got no chance, it won't win. <laughs> <laughs> We're the opposite end of the scales. You're saying it's going to fall at the first? I think it's probably oh, got... It's got as, what I will say is it's got as much chance of falling at the first as it has of winning. And if I had to yeah. pick one of the two, I'd probably pick falling at the first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, Plus, won't get, it won't get no. round. I don't think it'll get round. Oh, God. <laughs> The will be sitting at home. You happy? He'll be sending that mafia around to get me for rubbish in his horses. But it's, you see, this is a different type of race to anything. And there's some brilliant trainers and jockeys that never got close to winning this. And quite often it'll be a, yeah. some farmer in the middle of nowhere with one horse, four cows, and a donkey, and he he trained a winner. And uh, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen this year. But it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether you're a yeah. ghost zapper or a thunder spark or a professor or what. This is. Yep. This is in anybody's race, and you, if your horse can't jump, yep. you ain't gonna win. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put your money on that, let alone mine. No, well, there you go. That's a big call. <laughs> but we better move on to the next horse. That's Marty Can's second entry, and that's Escrow Agent. Now this one did all right last week, didn't it? Come second in your um, cross country thing at Cheltenham, but the um, the that's time a tough race. the time before it fell over. So you don't realise, do you, until you start looking at the form like this? How many how many of these horses do actually fall? You, when the races are on, you seem to think only oh, no, only two or three fall each race. Um, quite a lot of them have, um, have fallen at least once, haven't they? So look, I'd say the the only form guide here is just a slow start, and um, I don't think that's enough. Now it did come eighth in the Welsh National, though, and that was probably probably one of the best um, best chases you've had all season mm. um, and it was um, well, it says no extra so I don't know now I can't I yeah. can't see that one winning either but I think it'll probably get yeah. round yeah I'm saying outside of the top 10 right Dark Canyon is the next one I think Dark Canyon uh, the second Leon second Van Leon. Rensburg was, mm. and I think this is the one he, he reckons this is the better of the two once again three starts he's had it um, in all season it was uh, right in the table right from the start so it's obviously mm. his national horse and it's not been out since week but four has it yeah and it, uh, it's had one pull up and he's uh, third in a maiden chase uh, stayed on well and then seventh last start Millions over the 35 rear half early, uh, stayed on well. Then he's look, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go to the top 10. This, I, I don't think it's gonna finish top five. No, I don't. I think it'll be. You're, you're probably right. It'll finish top ten, but it's going to be one of those horses. I think that they, they're going to get too far behind with horses falling in front of yeah. them and all that sort of stuff. And it's probably going to be one of the ones yeah. running on towards the end. If it if it yeah. if it jumps round, it's, ob- it's quite obviously been laid out for the race. It's had its three runs early on in the season, and then it's been forgotten about. Yeah, well, last time was week four. Yeah, so that's a, that's a long, long time ago. That isn't it? Week four. So yeah, it's one of those things. If you're not the trainer, you'd leave it alone. So it's obviously the 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 plan. It's obviously the plan. He had to put this in this race. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna it's, it's gonna win. Yep. And uh, yeah, my concern with it would be that, especially with a lot of uh, Leon's horses, they like to come from the back, don't they? And yep, if you get true. too far, Most of them run I'll tell you, West Tip and Applaud, and maybe a couple of others that we haven't got to yet, they're going to go off pretty quick at the front. Surprised yep. 16 Co isn't in this field. I thought that'd be running, and that's another one that goes from the front. And if um, that Paul Fisk got his horse in it that he was talking about, Oscar. That's another one that likes to go off. So there's there's plenty of front runners in this, and so there'll be a strong pace, I think. And I think there'll yeah. be a lot of um, a lot of strung outs, and there'll probably be quite a few trainers yeah. in the forum on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, moaning about being pulled up because I'm not sure we were talking about it, weren't yeah. we, the other day? Um, about how the pull-ups work and whether there's a distance factor yeah. that's in. If you get so far behind, it automatically. Yeah kicks in to pull you up I, I, I think some of them get so I'll chime in on this one because I actually don't agree with that no? I, don't know, I know I'm going against the tide with it my call that um, just from like we all know there's no secret I've got some, some good duds <laughs> <laughs> and the tail off I've, I've had a lot of horses in the last two seasons that have tailed off in the hunt still complete the course my, my theory is uh, if your horse is near the tail of the field and hits a jump badly mm. during the race, then it's a big candidate to getting pulled up. Ah, well, that because I think more sense. I think inside the game, and I have no proof for this, so it's just my own personal opinion. I think inside the game, if your horse hits the fence bad, there's like a black mark goes against it, and then it's a candidate for being pulled up injured. Mm. That's my theory. Yeah, you could you could be um, could be right there, um, mm. and that could explain why some people are getting their horses pulled up when they don't think they 
they should because maybe they've, they've whacked a fence a bit and it's been a bit obscured from view and you haven't seen it or something. Um, well, and that happens, but mm. I, I've seen, in my calls, I've seen horses near the tail of the field or during the race hit a fence pretty badly or just hit it really and mm. uh, and then they get pulled up, you know, three or four fences later. Right, okay. So, but, yeah. Everyone's got their own opinion, mm. and I could well be wrong. But no, that makes that makes, that makes a, that makes a lot of, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that, that does make a lot of sense. But it, it's it um, yeah, it's still going to be difficult for Dark Canyon because he's, he's I think yeah. he's a bit of an older horse anyway, isn't he? So it's, if you get too far behind, you could be in trouble. But, we'll move right. on to uh, the next horse. That's the Bowie Sound. That's from the Darren Thompson stable. Darren trains some good horses. And uh, so, what do you think of um, the Bowie Sound? Well, what I think about this one is it's got loads and loads of form because it looks like. It, it ran last year. It was around last year. I don't think it ran in ran in this last year. I'm just having a look to see. Oh, it did. It ran in the race last year, and it finished seventh, which is yep, gonna be um, gonna be interesting, isn't it? Grand National seventh. Oh, yeah. That's right. And that's um. Let's just look at some. And the start before the last Grand National it fell. That and, just changes. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking it, about. So it has it? pulled up. It's unseated the rider. It's unseated the rider a lot. Um, look, I think you just got to re- respect. Horse, well, the fact that it's been around a trap before makes a difference because horses remember things, and that's why um, these fences are, are different to all the others, and they um, they yeah. know that they they, they recognise them, yeah. and they, they don't like them. They don't like them, and well, this horse obviously does like them. Obviously, I, it jumped around last time. I, I just think it, it can run the distance. The only thing that worries me is the form last year. The, of all the horses, they're not as good as the horses that are coming into this year. Mm. Everyone's upgrade, so I hope for uh, Aaron that it gets around. But I'm gonna say outside of my top ten. Right. Well, I I don't think it'll win, but I don't. I think it'll get around because yep. it's one of those. Uh, in in real life, it'll be one of those horses that runs in it every year for about five years, and it always gets around yep. and never looks like winning. And that's what I think yep. this one will be. This will be eighth, yep. ninth, tenth, fourteenth. If a load of horses fall, it might finish fifth or sixth. It isn't gonna win. Um, yep. you'd, you'd fancy it to get around, and it's it's good. It's good to see one. Good to see one back from last year. Oh, definitely. Well, there's uh, Tapa Napa or Tapa Napa. That's probably how I pronounce it. It's a Derek Hinton stable. And, and what do you think about this one? Well, what I think about this one is that, that um, Derek is he's one of the one of the few trainers who's talking his horse up, isn't he? Most of them are talking their horses down, saying, "Oh, it's got too much weight," or it. Uh, but he yeah. he just says it as it is, doesn't he? It's, it's going to take a legend to beat this, he says. So, yeah. and um, if you look at its form. Uh- it's only run um, once this season, so I don't know about how the rules work that you got to run three times. I'm not quite sure how that, whether that's right or not. Um, uh, the, 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 it's still the, the two runs were last the, year. The rule is it has to, I think it has to run 3,200 or more just once. Ah, right. So the 3,000, um, uh, 30 furlong or 32. Ah, right. I thought, I thought so you had to. Uh, it. I thought you had to run. You had to run three times to, yeah. to, to get in. No, um, no, I, I was a bit confused at myself, but you know what. Um, He's had it in the stable right from the start of the season. Well, it was in it was in last run. year. Yep. Look, but for some reason, and it's got nothing next to it. So maybe it was a non-runner. Uh, Does that mean it was yeah, a non-runner? I don't know what happened last season. I did watch that race too. I don't reckon it might mightn't have been a, a runner. But anyway, uh, I'm going top three. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's um, yep. it's one of the ones in the. Uh, it's one of the ones in the mix, isn't it? Despite that unseated rider, but like, that unseated rider was um, last season, wasn't it? So maybe it's done a bit of. Mm done a bit of school yep. and it's um, pretty, yep. pretty low enough in the handicap um, yep. he's already pulled off one coup this year by winning the uh, winning the King George um, yep. with Festival Stanley which I dare say he could have put in here with a big weight if he'd have wanted to um, so yeah it's got to be a chance it's one of the ones one of the ones to consider is what I would say at the moment oh, fair call. it's one of the ones I'll be uh, I shall reveal my selections at the end but it's it's in the uh, <laughs> it's in the mix <laughs> excellent <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going top three. Yeah. Uh, David, call the next one in. Yeah, David Robertson's is next, isn't it? Sensual. Now, he got a whopping week at Cheltenham last week, but I don't think he's going to have a whopping day at the Grand National with this. Um, yeah. It doesn't look like it's got much chance. If it's last six runs, it's unseated the rider four times. Yeah. Now, if I was the jockey who'd been booked to ride that, I'd be wanting a. I'd be saying, look, I want a little bit of a. I want a bit of a bonus, please, because um, I'm liable to um, get injured. Well, I'd say that the jockey for uh, Central, he'll be in the rubber dub before <laughs> the start of the race, having a couple of stiff ones, uh, just to take the uh, edge off the pain. I think you, you better find, I think you want to find out who is and send him a bottle of your breakfast gin so you can have some of that in the morning before the race starts. <laughs> <laughs> 
probably a good way to pour it over his uh, <laughs> cornflakes in the morning. Because I think he's going to need uh, it. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't fancy riding that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well done, so. yeah, no, I'm, yeah I, I can't fancy um, uh, Central. Sorry about that, David, but uh, I can't see Central doing it. No, I can't, I can't see that. So, Molly X Surfer well, next has got Zero Moon. Yeah, That's an well, interesting uh, one, isn't it? Molly X Surfer's been a bit of the uh, surprise packet, hasn't he? Mm. So, this has got well, unspectacular but reasonable form. It's not done a lot wrong, done a lot earth shatteringly brilliant, but it's one of those ones that after it's won, you just turn around and go, oh, yeah, that form's got Grand National winner written all over it yeah look it, it stayed on its feet five starts mm. the jockey um, yeah we had the, the tale of two jockeys compared to central where that jockey be using the breakfast gin over his cornflakes and you'd say yeah i'd rather be riding if, this one i think uh, if, if i was a jockey and they said to me well, you can either ride sensual for you for a, a fee uh, or you can ride zero moon and we're not paying you anything i'll go well i'll ride zero moon because it'd be safer yeah <laughs> Definitely. Well, he'll, he'll be drinking the English breakfast tea. <laughs> yeah, I think so. In the so. morning of the race. But yeah, yeah that's no, um... you're right. This horse, you're right. You could win this race and you look back at the form and go, God, he was telling us all the time. Mm, I think that's. Um... Um... That's a dark horse. That's um, yep. in my okay, thoughts. That's our second spot. <laughs> yep. I think it could be. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to go top ten and play safe with it. As uh, you said, uh, don't be surprised if it finishes in the top three. No, I wouldn't. And um, this next one um, is what the jockey from Central is probably going to be saying. Just as the jockeys are walking out, the paddock, looking out to the paddock, he's going to go. I'll be there in a minute. I'm just <laughs> just one for the road before I go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is uh, Peter Hannon, so how do you pronounce that? Hannon? Yeah, Hannon, yeah. yeah. And I um, haven't seen much of Peter this season. Uh, well, this horse has come back for a second bite, so it's, this is a second league season. It has, and the national it, last year. It didn't, but it ran in that cross country race at Cheltenham and, and pulled up. It ran in the Scottish Borders National last year and, and pulled up, and it looks like it ran in the um, Welsh National and um, finished pretty near the back as well so yeah no chance it's I got, can't see no, just one for the road no I think it's um, it might as well stay in a bar and have just one for the road mightn't it really yep D- definitely <laughs> and yeah, Iota uh, next we'll move, yeah, we'll move up to our next one and Iota mm. Darren House uh, Darren's a good trainer, but um, I think Iota is not going to be uh, payday national. No, tenth, tenth, twelfth, and pulled up. It's uh, that comes yeah. out in the um, comes out in a form figures oop, doesn't it? And I think it'll be oops if this one uh, if this one wins yeah. because uh, I don't think. It... Uh, the next one down the page is Oscar Paul Fisk. Yeah, now this is the one that ran really well the other week in that really long distance race, and yep. it's a trainer that we didn't know a great deal about, and he posted in the uh, in the forums that he just watched his race for his horse finishing fourth and it was really exciting and he was hoping he'd get in the Grand National and um, it then ran again last week um, yep. and ran well again it only came seventh this time but it was a little bit shorter so that's interesting yep. and the, the thing that is also interesting about this is that the trainer is obviously a for, like he's either a, a forward thinking trainer or he's already spent the winnings of this race and booked himself a Caribbean cruise because this is a <laughs> horse has already booked in a race for week 12 and week 13 can't uh, blame a man for being organised <laughs> no and that's um that's pretty much says he's got a plan i don't think it's gonna win i don't think it's good enough to win but it's yeah. one of those ones that'll force the pace which will probably help to sort of thin the field out a bit because some will make mistakes mm. and fall and pulled up and all sorts of things and it's another one that if it if it stands up which looking at its form it quite likely will it just it fell the first time out it hasn't fell since yeah. it's liable to be in there and fading coming up to the second last i would yeah. think and it's probably yeah. going to be whereas it's probably going to be in the first four most of the way around it'll probably yeah. end up finishing eighth ninth tenth Yep. 12th or something it'll be it'll be furthest away at the end yep. than it is at the beginning but it'll be there and it'll give yep. him a good run and he'll um, he'll have a bit of fun with it i think because he'll be uh yep. it'll be it'll be shouted out a lot by the by the commentary team yep. i think I, I think uh paul will have a, a lot of fun with it but i uh, come out of the second last it'll start to uh, will start to fight so i can't see oscar finishing top 10 no, I think we're uh, probably agreed on that one for a change today. Yep, we normally we're normally much more sort yep. of agreeable, aren't we? Than we are today. We're um, different opinions today. <laughs> no, it's, it's always good. It's healthy. It is. Uh, Daredevil. Yeah, Colin Clark. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> you don't sound too confident about yours. <laughs> No, um, it's... Um, I, I'd just say no. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, I, I, I hope it proves us wrong for Colin to say. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just making up the numbers. Yeah, it's, it's one of those ones that um, you can't you can't see. It wouldn't, even even in a four-name year, this one probably wouldn't win. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's out of it, I think. A, a bit like Arsenal, because Chelsea just scored again. It's 2 0 to Chelsea now, if anybody's interested, although everybody will know by the time this comes out. Yeah, um, yeah so Daredevil, we're not, um, we're not having any, yeah, anything like that one. No. Right, Oka Franca. Uh, and that's uh, Darren Howe's uh, second horse, and he's obviously a bit more confident with this one. And- dumps and stays and finally has his ground and big big charts yeah it could be another one of those little sort of like ones that's been set up for it couldn't it because it's it's, mm. like I say, it's done nothing spectacular but it's not done anything wrong either it's um yeah it's still it's finished the course last three starts he's had the horse in right from the start of the season so i'd say all along that this is going to be one of his uh, national runners yeah it's, uh, it's it's one of those ones that you wouldn't put anybody off i mean i don't know if you know what it's like over here on real grand national day or if you've ever been over here but everybody has a bet on the Grand National even people that don't yeah. have anything to do with horse racing they they yep. bet on things because of what they're called because it's, uh, it reminds them of their granny or because they like the name of the jockey or because they like the colour of the silks or anything and when you're somebody that, that everybody knows is into water racing, they they ask you, what chance has that one got and stuff? And that type of horse, that Oka Franca, is one of the ones that I'd never turn around to anybody and say, oh, it's got a really good chance of winning, I'd put some money on it. But it's also yeah. one that I would never turn around to and go, it's got no chance. Because it's one of them ones, again, that if at the end of the day it went and won, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world. So I'd, I wouldn't talk anybody out of that, yeah. but I wouldn't talk anybody into yeah. it either. It's one of yeah. them. It's, a, it's uh, one of those type horses. That yeah. A lot of... Um, you probably have the same thing in a Melbourne Cup, don't you? Probably. Um, yeah. Um, exactly. You wouldn't. You wouldn't put anybody off it, but you wouldn't put anybody on it either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, as I've mentioned before in an earlier uh, review, we did Darren Howes. He's just a little bit better trainer than what I am, and uh, so he's. His name's always stuck out for me because our horses, you know, at the end of the race, they're usually around near each other. And uh, I hope Darren um, has a bit of success tomorrow with this horse. Personally, I don't think it's top 10. Um, but uh, hopefully it gives him a good sighter and he's uh, a bit of excitement for a long way into the race. Yeah, it will do. I mean, it's one of the ones that they'll, they'll give him... Uh Give the give the trainer a bit of fun, won't it? Because he's going into it with with a bit of a chance. You'd think if everything falls into place, he could do all right. It's not like not like a total no open, but he also hasn't got the pressure of it being the favourite. So yeah, he can enjoy it. Uh, next one is Let It Rip. It's from uh, Alan McDonald's day. When this is his second horse. Um, it's... Yeah, you've got one unseated rider and a couple of pull-ups. But apart from that, it's um, not doing too bad. Let It Rip, and that was uh, Alan McDonald's horse from memory. And uh, what do you think? I don't know, it's been running in the right sort of races, hasn't it? He hasn't, it's another one of them ones that hasn't done anything too bad. Hasn't done anything too bad. It's pulled up a couple of times. It's unseated its rider once. But a good third. And one of those Moore's Millions a few weeks ago. Seventh at Cheltenham last week. It's it's it's, it's, the, it's the same as, as as the last one, I think. It's yep. um, It wouldn't be the biggest shock if it did. Um, yep. And it wouldn't be the biggest shock if it didn't. It's um, And this is the this is the, the bloke, Alan McDonald, who last week, not only did he um, try to win at a gold cup, but he also had a group one winner on the flat as well. So he's on fire as you would say yep. so um you couldn't you couldn't um you couldn't put anybody off it yeah um uh, for me i'm gonna say it's definitely uh top 10 yep i wouldn't argue with that um, i think it'll um it'll run yep, well. yep and i think it'll be it'll be uh, yeah i think it'll give him a good sight and it'll give him a good sight into the race for a long way it'll go very deep but i don't think it'll be top five but it, it's as you said it's one of those horses where you um could win the race and you look back at the form and go yeah yeah well that was just screaming yeah because i mean this time last you week know, we didn't till we, national. we didn't give his gold cup horse any chance this time last week did we so <laughs> and that, um, one, that one 100 to one so it's um yeah so it, and, and it let it rip comes in with a good bike it does and now um, we're getting into the horses that got the lower weight and it's got a bit of form yeah we'll be we'll be getting down so, to the um, ones that are yep. running out of the handicaps won't we and they'll not have much chance yep. at all so yep. case closes the next one that's James Shea yep. uh, James Shea we know he's a good trainer should handle the ground doubt it will stay though so he's not confident with his horse so um, well it's had a third over the 32 furlong said he has stayed on well has unseated the rider and has fallen and then in the Paul, Mo- Paul Moore's group one stayed on world then he's well, what does that mean like, oh, that's, I, that's, I don't know that's, so, that's um, gobb- gobbledygook how can you stay on and be eased it's impossible that's like being sort yeah, of yeah that's, that's, that's a bit each way isn't it so um, <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's you can't you can't stay on and be eased can you it's, um, yep, it's, yep. it's not it's not possible oh, you know I'm not probably a bit uh, bit more confident than what uh, James Shea is with his horse oh, I think it's a good chance I'm, I don't think it'll win uh, I 
I definitely don't think it's top five, but um, yeah, who knows? I think it'll be around the money. Yeah, I mean, you you, you forget that first run, don't you? Because that was a that was a mm. three mile hurdle race, which has got about as much relevance yep. to um, as much relevance to uh, to the Grand National as as, as Liverpool have to yep. win in the Premiership. But yep. um, I had to get that one in. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you don't like them, do you? <laughs> Box cutters. <laughs> and it's, it's it's best run probably last week, ninth, um, hmm. ninth over the over the over the trip. Um, so it's another one of them ones that could um, could surprise us and and sneak in there. But it's yeah. got a couple of uh, got a couple of fouls to complete yeah. that would, would put me off. So it's, it's not going to be um, it's not going to be going in my shortlist. But um, yep. yep. No, not it's, it's, it's not it's not a total no yep. over. Uh, our next one, um, and that is James Shea's only started too, so good luck James for that one. Our next one is She's Cool Too, Serious Chill, and he's the handicapper, so you, you know this horse has got a good weight. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he says here it runs all day and hoping to be a survivor. <laughs> yeah, this is another one of those ones that runs every week, isn't it? And it more often than not yeah. runs on on the day that I'm doing the commentator because that's when the long distance race. Are. So it's it's one of the yeah. ones that sticks in your head and you remember it. And it's it always gets quite a few mentions. It's always around at some point in the race, whether it's right at the beginning or right at the end or, or, or what so it's and a lot of those sort of form figures in there if you're looking down they're, they're, they're single figures aren't they third sixth fifth yep. sixth eighth fourth there's a, there's a, and that's what I just noticed as well yeah there's a couple of dodgy ones in there but if you're going to run them every week then, then that's what's got to happen and one thing you know is it's it's definitely going to stay the trip and it's definitely going to be around and uh, it's a live chance for a bottom weight isn't it yep yeah, I agree with you um, I'm going to go this is one of my 15 horses fitting into the top 10 <laughs> and uh, no, I think it's definitely top 10 if it runs and runs a place or wins um, I'll look back and go yes I'm not surprised but I've got to make a call here and uh, I'm going to say top 10 but not top 5 yeah I'll uh, it certainly, it certainly won't be in a, certainly won't be in a top five. Uh, I think it'll it'll probably be um, around and about for quarter quarter while, and it'll probably probably finish down the field. It'll be well well, well out yep. the back, jumping over the last two, but it'll probably yep. still be around tenth, twelfth, fifteenth, yep. something, depending on how many get around. Yep. Ukraine. Now uh, Ukraine. So that's um, James Fowlis's horse. I think that's his only starter as well. Now Ukraine ran in the national last year as well, fourth. Ooh, came fourth. And um, yep, and I, I I'm going top five with um, with um, Ukraine. Right. Well, in the in the re- in real in the real world, form in the national is worth twice all the other form is basically. Um, so if it was fourth last year, then that that puts it in with a puts it in with a chance, doesn't it? Mm. I'll just have a look. See and it's a horse that hasn't won in the two seasons. hasn't hasn't won, but um, I think it just needs a thirty-six last start. To Paul Wars it uh, unseated the rider third last. I don't know what position of the race it was in when it did that. Yeah, I just I'm going to go with last year's form and make it top five. I'm, I'm fairly confident with Ukraine. Yeah, I, I, I think you've got to you've got to you've got to, got to sort of uh, think that because it's been round there before. It's got to be got to uh, it's going to finish and get round. I don't think it's going to be um, don't think it's going to be in the top four though to be honest um, I think it'll I don't yep. think it'll do better than it did last year yep. because like you say there's a there's a lot of good horses in, in this um, there's a few that yep. look like they've been laid out for it there's a couple that have got nice weights yeah. and then there's a couple of really classy yep. horses at the top but if they do jump around yep will um, look like look like handicap good things yep. afterwards so I don't yep. think it's going to improve on what it did last year so, alright uh, the next horse yeah. that one's mine Heather Mix <laughs> Uh, it's got the 96, and that's the highest rated um, hunt horse I think I've ever had. So, um, and you finished oh third in them. You finished third in them. Moore's Millions, 33 furlong. So it's um, it's not it's not a no hope, is it? Yep, and uh, it, it is a game bred horse, and um, I bought it from an auction, and it had won a national on my single player game when I bought it. Ah, so um, that's interesting. So the only reason why I've, I've put it in the league because I just thought. Last year I didn't have a uh, national runner, and I thought well, this year I'll just have one go around. And um, and I must admit that third is the only thing that's given me a bit of hope because it was it was a pretty good third, and um, it's back to the good track. And yeah, well look, if I took if I went with my own how I've been rating the other horses in the race, you'd, I'd just say no. Nah. No hope outside the top ten, but uh, f- for me, I'm going to squeeze it in uh, into into my top ten. 
Well, if it's if it's if it's one over the over the fences in uh, in, in in your in your game, then um, mm. you've got to think it's got a good chance of getting around, haven't you? And that's half the battle is getting around. Yep. Um, yep. And from what I can remember of it, it's 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 not one that's normally up the front, is it? It's normally near the back of oh. the front, which means it shouldn't get mixed up in all the um, in all the all the argy bargy to take the lead and all that sort of stuff. So it could just yep. creep its way around the first circuit and then slowly get a bit closer, and it um, yep. it could well be running on at the end because it definitely looks like it stays, doesn't it? Yep. Oh, I think. Uh, I, I think it. it I'll, I'll just be hoping it uh, draws near the rails and stays near the rails. Just um, oh, that's you're gonna, my you're take, You're going to take the brave route. Best Instruct your jockey to take the brave route round the inside and not take the married man's route round the outside. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> 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 the woman eyes are out. <laughs> we want you to go play the game. <laughs> you better, um, you better give him a nip of that breakfast gin of yours before he sets off, and then you're sending him round the inside. <laughs> So uh, I'll keep, I'll no, keep I'll, I'll for that one. down. He'll be guzzling it. <laughs> He'll be guzzling it. <laughs> Right, that's that's the first brave call. Then take take the inside route all the way around. Uh, I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't want to be a jockey for you. I tell you, you have to have double life insurance. <laughs> uh, you'd be a likely lad. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right, so we're not ruining you out there. What, what about Tunisia? Tunisia. You could probably go, afford to go to Tunisia if you're on a busy. If you win this, uh, I don't know how far away Tunisia yeah. is from Australia. It's probably not that far, is it? I reckon it's a pretty long way to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't uh, want to walk longer it. than the national. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got this one's well, got this one's got more form than the great train robbers. It's it's pages and pages of it. It's got run every week for the last two years, I think. Yep. Well, this is James Wallace's other runner, and he's got Ukraine, which um, ran fourth last year in the national. And I'll just uh, have a look at its form now. Did he start at the national last year? Let's have a look. No, he didn't. No, it ran in the Scottish Grand National last year. Highland National. It won won that. Where's that? I think that's in Scotland as well. They have more Grand Nationals yep. than I don't know what. It's one of the village I live in ain't got a Grand National. Everybody else has got one. <laughs> <laughs> it was sixth in the Midlands Grand National, and it was seventh in the Scottish Grand National, and it won the Highland National. And um, So, oh, yeah, uh, this, is a, this is a sneaky one, hasn't it? It's sort of... Yep. It's been running every week, it would seem, but I, I can't remember a lot about it, to be honest. I mean, must, unless it's been running on Monday every week, but... What else is it going to be? Yes, yeah, so I, I can't remember much about it either. So look, I'm going to say no. I, I don't. I think it, it's just these uh, second horse that's made its way in, and uh, I don't think it'll complete the course. So, yeah, it yeah. fell last start. Yeah, I don't think it'll finish the race. Yeah, difficult to say, isn't it? It's um, I, I can't, can't, can't see it winning, but it, it could. It could plug round at the back, but um, yeah, it's, it's not going to. It's not going to be. Um, it's not going to be in my um, in my way of thinking. Yep, yeah, I think we're but in agreement there. Yeah, I think we are. So Peter Cahill's next Basford Bob is one of the uh, more successful trainers, having from down the bottom, having a bottom weight. Um, yep, doesn't look a lot of good though, does it? To be fair. Yeah, to be fair, uh, I agree with you. I can't see it doing anything. No, it's. Um, I think it might it may actually finish the course. It's not top ten. No, it'll be one of the ones that'll. that'll get get around and we closest at the finish and they'll be able to say and it came 12th in the Grand National without ever getting nearer than 14th or something I don't yep. know how it works yep <laughs> yeah so um, I think you're right yep Silver Fine Colin Clark mm. um, let's have a look at this uh, look once again I'd say no yeah it's not, not doesn't look very um, doesn't look very inspiring form wise and no. um, yep. yeah I mean, we are we are down at the bottom weights now really so we yep. we would be surprised if too much is too clever down at the bottom although I think we have got one yep. uh, we have got one little interesting one still to come um, Dan Silly Blue next Stu Gray the Smokey mm. yeah. uh, let's have a look here this has been running in some good races it hasn't necessarily been running that well in them but it's been running in all the big races mm. it's, not, it's running the Welsh National and the Hennessy Gold Cup. It's been running in all, all the big races, but it hasn't been running mm. anywhere near the leaders. So um, it's yeah. Look, I'd unmuted. say it'll finish outside the top ten. Maybe not surprised if it finishes near fifth, but I doubt it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I think Stu's uh, other horse is more of a chance. I think it'll be nearer the fifteenth than fifth, to be honest. But um, yeah, it's um, yep. you've got to give it the. the, the a little bit of credit because he has been running in all the big races so yep. but he, he's, he's, he's not scared to enter it he's yep. not scared to enter it now and that's uh, that's yep. good this this next one is very interesting isn't it Crest of Thorns yep. 
Thunder Sparks only starter in the race, and um, and it's right down the bottom. He wanted this one. Yeah, and it nearly didn't get yep. in, did it? There was some sort of mix-up, wasn't there, yesterday? And the, the, they started yep. scratching them, and this one nearly got nearly got scratched because it had uh, it was one of the low-rated horses. Mm. But um, Thunder Spark thought it was uh, the better of his two runners, and he wanted it in. Yeah, and it took, um, took, oh, I agree. I, I think it deserves to be st- uh, lining up. I he think does. He took the other one, didn't he? Yeah. Back that up. yeah. Was it Wine Wise? Was the other one, and that one, that one. If yeah. that had been in it, we'd have probably been talking about it as having a bit of a chance. So mm. the fact that he thinks this one's better, and uh, I think on form, I'm going to say not a chance uh, because he Thunder Spark is such a good trainer, and he fancies this one. I'm, I'm just going to go top ten. And if you look at it, it's got round all the time, doesn't yep. it? You know, it hasn't sort of it hasn't troubled the judge, but it also hasn't been rolling around on the floor or chucking a jockey off. So. Um, yep. And it's yeah. only it's only five as well, so it's one of the youngest horses in the race. Whether it's got the experience or not, I don't know. But it's um, yep. there are things that make it interesting. The fact that it's um, yep. trained by it's trained by the fact that it's only run a few times and it's never been never never failed to complete gives it a bit mm. of a squeak. I think so. It's one of those ones that yep. you can get throw in there. Yep, but uh, not top five in my book. Okay. Right, first Ben Jewell is next. And Peter Hannon, this is his second starter. Let's have a look at it. Um, well, it's just as a second season. Yeah, which I like that. I like the fact that people keep keep horses back and run them again for the, run them for the second year. It's um, yeah. give you some sort of continuity it's, um, so you can com- compare the years and all that sort of stuff. Well, it's finished all its races. Some late headway in its last start. Uh, I'm going to say no. Yeah, it's one of them ones. Outside you, the top ten. You're going to say no for no particular particular reason is why I'm going to say no it doesn't look like it's got it doesn't look like it's got a regular way of running I think once or twice it's been up the front a couple of times it's been out the back um, it hasn't done anything wrong but at the end of the day it hasn't done anything that right either um, right yeah and it's exactly it's one of them ones again that if it won you'd, you'd say well oh yeah I can see why it's won it's never it's never one that you're gonna you're gonna tip up is yep. it really you're not, you're not gonna you're not gonna yep. tip that to anybody yeah I I'm think you'd be putting say. your money elsewhere as a punter you would. Yep. Uh, next horse is Winter Blue for Daniel French. That's Daniel's only starter. Uh, we'll have a look at his form here. Well, it doesn't fall. Oh, it has. It has had a fall. Sorry. Yeah, right. Third, third start. Third race of the season. Yep. Yeah, he's been running it over the distances, but I think um, the fact he's been doing that and it hasn't really shown anything. It's a no for me. Yeah, it's one of those ones. It'll, it'll probably get round. It'll probably round. It'll be out out the back. Finish about fifteenth or or twentieth or, uh, or whatever. The end interesting thing for me about this horse is is whether it's called winter blue because it's named after the uh, heather nova tracks so i have to try and get heather nova and she's one of my favorite female artists and uh, particularly good track of it's called winter blue so i wonder if he's he's a fan and um that's why he's called it Winter Blue. Oh, never know. But um, that's, that's uh, unfortunately the most interesting thing I can say about it from my <laughs> point of view. <laughs> well, it's got no weight. And that's probably the only if, thing, it's only real positive is it has no weight. So. Well, it'll be running, it'll be running, yep. goodness knows how many pounds out of the handicap, I should think, won't it? Because it's, it's rated, yep. what, 70, 70, 70 pounds worse than the top one? So, yep. what's that? I mean, five, yeah. five stone, isn't it, or something? So, it's... <laughs> Yeah. It, it should it should Highly really unlike. should really only be carrying seven stone so um yep. yeah it, it can't win can it yep. and the lucky last well yeah this is an interesting wasn't it you save an interesting one till last because it's the bottom weight it's the lowest rated horse in the race it should have absolutely no chance whatsoever but the inter- there's two interesting things about it one it's named after a horse that won the real grand national i don't know if you know that in um, um the, the name's familiar so yeah, in ni- 1986 yep. i think it was and the year before that it yep. turned it toppled over at Beaches Brook. That was that. So that was a that that's that's one thing that the the trainers obviously thought it was going to be a Grand National horse from the minute he had it because that's why he's called it West yep. Tip. Unless of course it was a game horse and it was already called it. The other thing is this could have a significant effect on the rest of the race because every time it's run, when I've been commentating on it, it's gone off like a train and it jumps reasonably well. Now if it goes off like a train and jumps okay, it is going to mean that the pace of the race is going to be tremendous and that's going to mean that some of those classy horses that have got the tendency to whack one now and again, like your, yep. your Lagos Coffees and your um, 
your last dances and all them. Yeah. It could get them. It could get them going, and it could get them tipping off. Or if that thing that that you suggested is right about making a mistake when you're a bit behind and then getting pulled up mm. afterwards. Yep. For for a horse that's at the bottom of the weights and is totally to all intents and purposes out of it in a no opener, it is going to be quite a significant horse in the race, yeah. I think. And whoever is well, whoever's calling the beginning part of the race is going to be saying this horse's name a lot because it'll be yeah. it'll there'll be this one, there'll be a Plaud, there'll be Oscar and probably another one uh, as well. Yeah. That will be going off lickety split and this one will be going fast the fastest at a lot and it's probably yep. a, a shame for Matty McLean that we're talking about his horse yep. setting the race up for something else but that's what it is it'll yep. make sure it'll be a yep. it'll it'll be a it'll be a thrilling race I think yep. because of horses like West Tick because West Tick will go off yep. like a train and if they let it get too far in front of course they might not catch it and, and we've seen that happen all season we have yeah so um, it's, it's well it's Matty McLean's only starter um, in his notes he says he says what you says likes to ball along in front he doesn't think it finish top 10 he shouldn't he shouldn't do you're on, saying with a bit of luck it yeah, could. On, on on form and all sorts of stuff like that it shouldn't have a chance at all but it is yeah. going to be one of the most significant horses in the race because it's gonna it's gonna set the um it's gonna set the pace of the race and it just could slip the field and get away it mm. usually it usually gets swallowed up towards the end um yeah. but yeah. You know what this is like. This is, this is a different, different sort of race altogether. And um, yeah. if it if it suddenly decides, oh crikey, I like these fences. They're a bit different. And whoosh, it could be gone. So yep. it's well not a forlorn hope uh, right down the bottom of the handicap. Let's put it that way. Uh, I think you're you're the biggest gun for it. Um, I I don't think it'll finish top ten, but I think it will finish the race. And um, and as you said, it's uh, I agree with one of your early comments. It's um, it's a horse that's going to get its name called a lot because it's going to be leading. But it's also going to be horse that's setting the race up for mm. something else if i could get a bet on it being in the lead of jumping beaches brook first time round, i'd have a bet on that yep um yeah yeah <laughs> Whether it's in the lead, whether it's in the lead second time round, going over which is a little yeah. thing entirely. But uh, I'll go, it, it, it um, uh, doesn't always get to the uh, lead uh, straight away. But it's um, it'll it'll be in front. It'll be, it's one of those horses where you sit in the betting ring near the bookies watching it on the TV and you keep an eye on the Indian guy hanging around because yeah. you know he's fucking he's spotting for the uh, big Indian bookmakers back home. <laughs> <laughs> and if he quickly goes up and puts a bet on. <laughs> be in front of the beaches <laughs> on the second lap <laughs> you quickly get your money out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So there we go, then. That that that's all of them. What 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 are we what are you thinking? Who are you um who are you siding with? Well, I've written down my um top five as we went along. Sorry about that. I'm just walking through the house here, and um, I'm gonna go. Well, here's my top five. It's a uh, Kane Bambo, uh, is that City to, Press, is that to come fifth Lagos. Or? Are you, are you doing this um, in Miss World order, or are you doing it in sort of like racing results uh, order? This uh, this is just a uh, no order at all. All oh, right, okay. Just top five, oh. no no order at all. So Kane Bambo, City Press, Lagos Coffee, Tapanapa or Tapanapa, and Ukraine, and I'm gonna put my money on. <sighs> Ah, oh, look, I think Lagos Coffee and Tupper Napa will be fighting it out at the finish. Yeah? I, th- I think they're top two. Um, look, I- I'll go Tupper Napa. Who am I going to stick up in the mix? Right, These are the ones that I'm going to stick in the mix, and then I'll tell you what I think will win afterwards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chuck Ramses in there because I think that's yep. um, that's gonna be in there with a with a with a squeak. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put this City Press in because I think setting it up for that one. Mm-hmm. It is a smoky, isn't that that City Press? Isn't it? It is. That's 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 the one that's, that I'm really yep. looking at. Um, yeah. Crest of Thorns, I'm gonna put in there as well because it's just you, you, you can't not put Crest of Thorns in there. I don't think. Um, yep. Yep. Zero Moon is going to be in there All as well. Right. Yep. That is going. That is going to be in there, and uh, I think National Sensation will probably run on some. But if you're going to ask me what I think is going to win, I'm going to go with Krista Thorns is the yep. winner for me. Krista Thorns wins, okay. and second is going to be Zero Moon for Molly at Surfer. Third's going to be City Press, yep. uh, and then I'm going to take uh, Ramses to finish fourth, and probably Kane Bambo or National Sensation or something like that to to, to follow that. Home. Yep. It's it's interesting. That with all the all the horses that uh, Thunder Sparks got, that is um, banking on one that very nearly got balloted out of the race. Yeah, um, and that is interesting, isn't it? It is, and, you, and, and that's the that is the unknown 
quantity or quality. Yeah, and the the the, the, the other really big unknown in there is if is if Rumble Down Lad stays the trip, that's got the class to win as well. Yeah, but we just don't know whether it will. So we'll we'll yep. we'll see. Um, but we hope we hope you do well. We all should do should do well. You're. F- you and Gray flying a flag for the commentating team. Um, right. Well, I think you. I think you've got a live, a live outsider there. I think. Uh, yeah. I think you'll you'll be getting a mention. So. Yeah. Well, I, I hope so. So that's it then. We've we've we've, we've nailed our colours to the mast. We'll wait and see what happens now. That should be. Uh, it will be an exciting race, and I can't wait. No, it's. I've be. been looking forward to it all season. It's gonna be good, gonna be good. It's. Uh... Yep. Okay. No worries. Okay. So there you have it. Then it's Tapanapa from Lagos Coffee for Doug and it's Christoph Thorns from uh, Zero Moon for me. Uh, let's have a quick look, look in the forums and see what everybody else has been tipping before we wrap up for the day and we can see that Paul Rhodes is tipping himself to win so that's always a good always good to show a bit of confidence. He thinks that his Lagos Coffee will win it with Dark Canyon chasing it home. Martin Keynes has gone for a national sensation to beat Last House. Ghost Zapper has gone for Dark Canyon to beat Last House. Uh, Derek Hinton has gone for his own Tapa Napa uh, to to beat Ramses. And let's have a look at also we got a uh, Graham Clutterbuck. He's gone for Tapa Napa as well to beat Last House. So there's a there's a definite pattern emerging here. Dark Canyon to beat Lagos Coffee is Leon's suggestion. Uh, Kev Con he thinks Last House will beat Ramses and. Anna Din, who I'm beginning to think now is Stu Gray, is gone for the has gone for Last House to beat Dabawi Sound. Pomard thinks Oka Franca is going to beat Last House, and so there we go. So there's quite a few, uh, quite a few in there, but it looks like Tapanapa, Tapanapa, and Lagos Coffee and Dark Canyon, the Last House are all the top fancies. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. The race is. Um, coming up live on a live stream with uh, Gray on Monday evening so we'll see you all for that and let's hope everybody comes back safely and everybody has some good luck see you next time